Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you the tools that I think are absolutely necessary for a beginner or intermediate home cook to start to make really high quality pizza at home, including the one pizza tool that I personally wouldn't try making pizza at home without. If you're new to this channel and you're wondering why I might be qualified to tell you about this, well, I used to make pizzas for a living. Check out Union Loafers Pizza here in St. Louis for my resume on that. I've also made like over a dozen pizza recipes for the home cook on this channel. So yeah, I make a lot of pizzas at home and I really wanna show you guys the tools that I use and the tools I think you need to be successful. So the first set of items I think someone who is just starting to get into pizza needs to be successful is a good mixing setup. For me, that's a medium stainless steel bowl, a spoon and a lid to go with that bowl. And if you're wondering, hey, Bri, what about a stand mixer? Well, you definitely don't need one to make great pizza at home. There's like five or six recipes on this channel where I show both hand mixing and stand mixing of pizza doughs, or I don't use a stand mixer at all. To clarify, I'm not saying that you need this specific bowl lid spoon combo, but if you did want them, they're gonna be linked in the description below, along with everything else that I'm gonna mention in this video. And yes, I will get a very small portion of Amazon sales as an affiliate. And when I say small, I mean like, very small. Now, why is it important to have a mixing setup? Well, when it comes to mixing and fermenting doughs, one of the most important things you can do as you learn how to be successful is to eliminate variables. I use the same bowl every time I mix bread or pizza because it gives me a barometer for how things are coming together and it doesn't introduce anything different from mix to mix that might affect the outcome. Dough temperature is a good example of that. If you used a big ceramic bowl one time and a plastic one with a super tight fitting lid the next, your fermentation times could be all over the place. Ceramic tends to suck heat out of a dough and that really slows down its fermentation, whereas plastic bowls with lids insulate the dough and that tends to speed it up. Standardizing the vessel that you mix and ferment the dough in eliminates those variables. What about a sturdy spoon? Well, I've actually bent quite a few spoons when mixing doughs together by hand, so I always use something that is small enough to be maneuverable. A chunky wooden spoon is just not a fun way to mix things together in my opinion. And I pick something that's sturdy enough to not bend back when the dough gets nice and sticky. This particular spoon was stolen from a Rick Bayless restaurant in Chicago called Topla Bampo. Sorry, Rick, but I really love it. It's really sturdy and I'll link to something very similar down in the description. And then lastly, this lid is pretty self-explanatory. It's very reusable, it's not plastic, and it seals the top of this bowl well enough. The next tool that I think is absolutely essential for the beginning budding pizza cook is this digital scale. I'm sure most of you guys aren't surprised at that because all of the recipes on this channel are communicated in the videos via grams. Volume is also always in the description, by the way, if you need it, but I use grams because it's more accurate, full stop. When it comes to scaling ingredients for bread or pizza doughs, grams is better than volume. I even use a scale to measure water in grams because that's more accurate than using a pitcher with milliliters on the side. A lot of people really hate that I label the water in my recipes in grams and that's okay. That's how we did it in the bread bakery slash pizza restaurant that I helped found here in St. Louis. So that's how I'm gonna communicate it to you. But yeah, I really think you'll start to see a lot more consistency in your pizza results if you start using a scale. We all know that flour can be all kinds of different volumes depending on the humidity, how compact it is, or how long it's been sitting in your cabinet. So in the spirit of eliminating variables, I say get a $25 kitchen scale and enjoy having better pizza. So I've covered some of the tools that you need to both scale and mix your dough, but what about actually baking the pizza? Well, there's actually an intermediate step between those two called proofing, and it's really important. Proofing happens after the dough has been divided and it gives the ball of dough some gas and the ability to loft itself higher in the oven. For most breadier styles like New York or New Jersey or even Neapolitan style, the secondary fermentation or the proof is super necessary. The tool I use most often to do that properly is this four quart Pyrex glass container or something very similar to it. You don't need this specific one, but the main benefit to using these over say a sheet tray with plastic wrap is that they're stackable. That makes fridge storage a lot easier and they can be pulled out one at a time. So that way, if you need to have two doughs, 
those for a two person pizza night, you can pull those out of the fridge, proof them up and bake only two. With a sheet tray, once the dough is on the tray, all of those doughs have to travel together. So if you pull one out, you have to pull all four. A quick note with these containers though, is that since these lids are so tight fitting, the thermal energy of the dough is gonna make that proof carry over a lot further when you go to put the dough in the fridge for its cold fermentation. So you need to keep an eye on the dough temperature. So don't use water that's maybe over 80 F or just crack the lid on these for the first 15 minutes so they don't gas up and overflow. And that's it. This is a really simple tool, but super effective. And I think you should probably buy this or something like it. Now to actually bake these expertly mixed and fermented pizza doughs, we're gonna need three more tools. The first of which is what I call a pizza loading peel. This one in particular came with my Uni Pro pizza oven and I like it a lot more than say a wooden peel because it's thin. The thicker wooden ones like this one are just hefty and chunky and all around make it a struggle to get the pizza off of it and into the oven. Plus, once a wooden peel gets wet sauce and cheese on it, the next pizza you build on it will stick way more than the aluminum one. These days, I only use my loading peel for building and loading pizzas into my oven. I use an entirely separate peel for actually moving those pizzas while they're cooking. That's what I call a turning peel. But before I get to this, let me quickly cut and serve this pizza with this dope cutter tool that I got from Bespoke Post, the sponsor of this video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers boxes of top shelf goods to your house for more under the radar brands, most of which are small businesses, like 90%. Every month they introduce new products to their members like outdoor gear, barware, and home and kitchen goods, all based on a preference quiz that you fill out when you sign up. Each month you get to preview what's inside the box before it's shipped so you can decide if you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or even skip that month altogether for no charge. This month I got three boxes. First I got the chop kit that came with this vegetable cleaver and Alaskan ulu knife with a crescent blade. I've been using that to cut pizzas. It's insane. Look at this thing. I also got the destination box which is a garment slash duffel bag combo. That's for when I'm going somewhere but I have to pack something that I don't want to get wrinkled. And my last box is the smoked box. I'm probably most excited about that one because it includes a food and cocktail smoking kit and a butane torch. The question now becomes, what can't you smoke? So to check out Bespoke Post, click the link in my description and use code Lagerstrom20 at checkout to get 20% off your first box. That's bespokepost.com slash Lagerstrom20. Thank you, Bespoke Post. Now, when you're in the throes of a pizza party situation, while the pizza is still cooking, you need to do two things. One is cook that pizza properly, and two, you need to build the next pizza to drop behind it. With only one pizza peel in play, you'll have to use that peel to turn and cook the pizza, and then once that pizza is out of the oven, use it again to build the second pizza. This is a much longer turnaround than I personally like at a pizza party, and that first pizza is gonna be fully consumed before the second one is out of the oven. And the loading peel is gonna be super hot from moving pizzas around in the oven, and that means that the pizzas you build on it from that point forward are probably gonna get like super gummy and stuck. So enter the pizza turning peel. This is a smaller and more nimble version of the loading peel that we use just to turn and cook the pizza while it's in the oven. We actually use something almost identical to this to turn and cook the pizzas professionally at Union Loafers. I wanna stress that this tool is kind of a game changer. For me personally, the quality of my homemade pizzas went up by a lot when I started using it, especially in the outdoor style pizzas that I cooked in my uni. For example, like thin crust Roman or Neapolitan style pizzas. Those pizzas in particular need to be turned nearly constantly. But for New York, New Jersey, everything bagel, or even indoor Neapolitan style pizza, a turning peel makes cooking that pizza a lot more controlled, consistent, and just more fun. The last and most important important tool that I probably wouldn't live without is unfortunately the most expensive. That's a pizza steel or a stone would also work, but I highly recommend a steel over a stone if you're in the market for a pizza cooking surface. If you already have a pizza stone that you like, then maybe dial in the fundamentals of pizza fermentation or pizza building before you upgrade to the steel. But yeah, a pizza steel does the work of transferring heat from the oven to the pizza better than anything else I've seen in the home kitchen. Mine is a quarter inch plate of steel that always stays in my oven because it makes my oven way more efficient. That steel acts as a kind of heat sink that keeps the interior temperatures of this thing way up when I'm constantly opening the door to check on food. When I was still cooking with a pizza stone, I noticed that the heat needed to set and caramelize the bottom of the pizza properly would be gone after just one pie and I'd have to recharge it for another 15 minutes or so. 
That's far from ideal. With the Pizza Steel, I can get four pizzas cooked properly before I need to recharge it. In a pizza restaurant, they use deck ovens that have large, thick plates of steel on the top and the bottom of the pizza to hold and transfer that heat. Theirs are just thicker and get hotter. But in the US, no home oven that I'm aware of goes above 550F. So the combo of a thoroughly preheated oven and a thick pizza steel will get you as close as possible to a New York or New Jersey style gas pizza deck. You should be able to get all of these tools for about $100 to $200, depending on the shipping of the pizza steel. That's usually not super cheap, but overall, you should be able to make not good, but great pizzas with all of these tools. Throw in a stand mixer if you want, but again, that's not necessary at all, and like 75% of pizza styles do not require it. Let me know in the comments what tools you think I missed or what you guys use at home. This is in general just what works for me, having made a lot of various styles, and I think it's pretty effective. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Smash that freaking like button if you like this video and maybe turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss a vid. See you next time.